You're listening to Life Study Library, hosted by me, Lai Yosh. In this channel, I'll talk about these interesting and highly educational information on science and psychology by implementing data from scholarly studies. In this video, I'll talk about the seven toxic traits of a workplace that can ruin your mental state. If you're interested, please enjoy the video and don't forget to like the video, subscribe to Life Study Library, and share to others that this channel exists. Today's study is from the Sunshine Education and Research Center at the University of South Florida, and the researchers have compiled a total of 79 studies and made a meta-analysis about the common seven factors of a toxic work environment. In the modern day, it's a common knowledge that a toxic work environment will no doubt have negative consequences to us workers, not limited to things like prolonged negative stress, depression, inability to form healthy social relationships, all sorts of yucky things that we want no amount of. And the study looked out what specific qualities of the company you should look for to figure out if your workplace is not worth your dedication. In particular, the study focused on health damages including severe headaches, lower back pain, insomnia, and gastrointestinal malfunction, and how frequently they appeared in each ranking. Okay, let's get going with the 7th place. 7th place goes to workplace with long labor hours. Long labor hours in this case is about simply having to physically be stuck at your office doing work beyond your responsible hours. Many might immediately associate this with the various types of health damages, but surprisingly with this particular particular ranking, it was placed at the very bottom. Interesting. Sixth place goes to the preserved lack of control to your work. When your boss suddenly stops you from working on this project they themselves assigned and abruptly calls you to join another meeting, you'll probably be pissed. When that kind of behavior is the norm in your workplace, you'll soon start to feel as if you yourself do not have control in how you maneuver throughout your day. According to the research, this is another factor that can damage your overall health, as many studies have shown that a sense of control to what you do plays a major role in your overall mental health and your emotional stability. However, I do understand that emergencies or other unexpected occurrences can totally happen in the workforce, so trying so hard to remove every single interruption might not be ideal either. Fifth place goes to when your responsibility and your role is unclear. This is the case when you feel like what you're expected to do at your work isn't explained clearly, and your questions aren't answered clearly. This is not only limited towards your immediate job responsibilities, but can also be applied to the overall idea of what your company is doing. Humans are not robots, so we need reasons and purpose for our hard work. Thus, a workplace that lacks this factor will most definitely lead to an increased negative emotions or stress, not to mention physical fatigue which disables you to do stuff outside of your work. Characteristics of a toxic work environment fourth place goes to too much workload. This might seem similar with long labor hours, but the current factor is about the amount of labor over a set time. When you're way too busy and have to work so much more than your time allows, it'll obviously cause great distress in your health. Also, along with vague responsibility, excessive workload correlated the most with your fatigue, which is honestly pretty self-evident. Characteristics of a toxic work environment third place goes to negative interpersonal conflicts. This includes things like getting yelled at by an annoying boss or something like that. Basically, the more conflict you have to deal with other people within the job, the greater the health damage becomes. Again, avoiding this completely doesn't seem likely, but too much of this is in no way a positive either. Characteristics of a toxic work environment second place goes to role conflict. This happens when, for example, you are told by one superior to work on uh, creating this file and inserting data. So you work on it, but then a different superior comes and tells you to do a speech in front of the president without prior notice. This kind of a clash between multiple tasks, especially after you entered the flow or the concentration zone, is really annoying, and it did correlate strongly with unwellness, particularly within your digestive system. The final and the first place goes to organizational constraints. If you see that your workplace accepts and normalizes this kind of behavior, do yourself a great favor and escape that environment ASAP. Organizational constraints are about your workplace, directly or indirectly, disables you from working effectively and efficiently. Examples include not having enough people or information to effectively work on a task, or not being allowed a single bathroom break or a stretching break, or alterations of an obviously superior labor style not being allowed due to like company culture or something like that. And if you're wondering whether this characteristic plays a negative role in your digestive system, the answer is yes, it does. 
So that was the top 7 qualities of a toxic company. Additionally, another similar article was published on the Management Science in 2015, and this one is a meta-analysis that used another different study from the same year which took 228 data and picked out the very best ones to talk about the relationship between work and personal health. And this is a very good study because this form of study is the most reliable one of them all. I'll talk about it in the next video. In the meantime, video and book recommendation. Today I recommend you to check out a video called 9 Scientific Techniques You Can Use to Ride Your Emotion. Often in various environments in life, for example in the workplace, many things can happen that will definitely startle you or make you think that you don't have what it takes to thrive in that environment. And people often answer this thought by saying things like, you need to have more willpower to push through your hardships. But I must say that that's absolutely not always true. I literally say in the video that we need to use scientific and psychological knowledge to help us control our emotions, and not through things like willpower or confidence. Another interesting thing about the video or the study I used in the video is that it used professional therapists as samples and it asked them about the most effective emotional management techniques that they recommend. It's one thing to ask the recipients of the techniques about their favorite emotional management techniques, but this study adds a greater level of credibility because if these techniques are recommended by numerous professionals, it'll have an incredibly high chance of applying to your own life. If that interests you, please check the video out by clicking the link in the description. I know it's a very long video, but I almost guarantee you that there's something to learn about. Also, if you're already in a negative emotional state due to a toxic work environment or honestly any emotionally difficult environment, I recommend you watch the expressive writing series. I made like 4 videos or so about the essentials of expressive writing. This method is basically about you writing about your emotions on a notebook in as much detail as possible. What we tend to slip up a bit concerning our emotions is that because we often bottle up our emotions in ourselves and keep it as an intangible and indescribable mesh, we're not able to directly look at it and examine if those emotions are even worth considering. By writing about them in a tangible form, you'll be able to look at it and realize, wait, I was so focused on this emotion, but in reality, this is a completely unrelated feeling that has nothing to do with my current situation. Expressive writing is a really, really, really effective and efficient method to solve this issue. So whenever you encounter a stressful or a mentally unhealthy situation that puts you in a loop of negative thoughts, I recommend you try this out to actually examine and solve this issue. And a book I want to recommend today is called Chatter, The Voice in Our Head, Why It Matters and How to Harness It by Ethan Cross. This book talks about the voice we all have in our head, often telling us things like, you shouldn't ask this person out, you'll embarrass yourself, or you should relax for today and start your exercise or study routine tomorrow. We all have this little desired goblin who tells us not to do the stuff that's good for us and do stuff that are bad for us. All of the 7 traits of a toxic work environment I've talked today can all make you lose focus on your responsibility, which will indirectly ignite chatter. And it's a pretty common knowledge that a once ignited chatter is most often extremely difficult to force it to quiet down. So for most people, it's much more efficient to simply understand the triggers that starts this mess and to defend against that so these negative behaviors do not get started in the first place. The link to the book is in the description so you should check it out. I've been your host, Lai Yosh. Thank you for watching Life Study Library. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and share to others that this channel exists. I'll see you in another video. Peace out.